Hey, Dr. Nikki here. Thank you so much for joining us for our new episode. And I am thrilled to have with us entrepreneur, global leadership speaker, Bisila Bokoko, who I am just so honored to have gotten to know very briefly. And I'm really, really honored that she took her time to come talk to us today about entrepreneurship in the time of COVID. Thank you so much for being with us, Bibi. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Of course. All right, so we're going to go right into it. My first question for you is that it's no secret that COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on the business world writ large, right? And that given the fallout, many people have had to deal with the consequences that come with businesses sh shutting down or the, the loss of revenue as a result of the limitations in our economy. Given your experience and your knowledge as a business leader, what are some of the challenges that you feel entrepreneurs are facing right now? Well, I think in a um, global spectrum, every entrepreneur is feeling one of the things is fear of the unknown. You now, besides what is happening with your cash flow, with your forecast, and everything in economic terms and what happened with your employees, the first thing is the fear itself. Because every entrepreneur already make a big jump, just um, taking the risk to invest in something, your ideas or, well, the money that you put into your business. So now being a stock and not being able to continue with your activity is bringing certain um, anxiety to all of us. And I think the number one priority is first to take care of yourself, because if you don't take care of yourself, doesn't matter if you're not in balance with yourself and you go through that fear and you realize that that's the life of the entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship means that you're living in a roller coaster and that you need to be comfortable living in the unknown. So that's the number one rule because before you start to just make all the analysis, economic terms, and get to work with your employees about how you're gonna do this, the first thing is to put yourself together because otherwise nothing works. You need to remember that you are the one leading that boat. And in this case, it's very important that you feel comfortable in confidence. So one of the good things is from every crisis, there is an opportunity. It might be that your business is not there anymore, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't do a new venture. I mean, mm -hmm. I opened up business in times of crisis before. In the previous crisis, economic crisis of 2008, I started my wine company. And I started other companies with it, fashion businesses, food business, and they didn't move forward. So it's okay. I mean, the good news is that you try and you're not gonna have that in your back and your mind and feeling that you didn't try before. And some business is still is still there. You go through it, you find a strategic partnerships, which is something that I also advise. And right now, the number one priority for every entrepreneur is to look at your cash flow. How long can you survive with the current situation? So you need to make a forecast about what is happening in the next 60 days, and then to see six months from now, because the, the, good, the, the good news and the bad news is that we really don't know, but we need to live with this. We need to really get used to, to not know what is happening and still maintain our spirits up. And another good important thing is to motivate your team. It is okay to be honest with your team and tell them that you don't know because you don't know. <laughs> tell them the truth, tell them that you don't know what's gonna happen, tell them that you don't know the situation, just be honest with them, open up to them, share with them how you feel, and also be ready to listen to them listen to your employees, see what's going on with them, and look for ways that you could help each other because at the end, it's teamwork. Absolutely, absolutely. And I love that idea of being innovative even in times of crises. And that really goes right to my next question, which is so often when we are in high stress moments or in times of crises, it's very natural to sort of reach for whatever is easy or whatever seems to be a quick fix without giving true thought to the long-term negative consequences. So based on your own experience and even your own awareness of other people's journeys in the world of business, what are some of those quick fixes or traps, shall we say, that entrepreneurs can find themselves falling into in times of high stress? Well, I think that, um, that one of the biggest traps is the feeling that do not good enough. You see, sometimes you are putting the external 
circumstances and make them personal. And that is something that a lot of entrepreneurs is a, is a big trap and is to be a, swimming in that waters that I'm not good enough and this is my fault and just being in the victimism mentality. So I think that one of the biggest um, things is to get out of that pattern of behavior because it's a pattern of behavior that a lot of entrepreneurs have and we have to continuously fight in that. So that is one of the big traps that we can get into. And another of the traps is the trap of fear, the trap of negativity. It's not going to happen. Why I got into this? Why I get myself in so much trouble? I could be better just having a, a, a regular employment. But you could also lose regular employment. I mean, in reality, fear is fear and you could, the fear of losing, all of us, we have this fear. Fear of losing money, fear of losing a job, fear of losing clients is fear. It doesn't matter, but that fear of loss is another trap. So I think that we need to shift the way we think and just thinking in what I could win from that. What I'm gonna learn from this situation and make sure that you don't make this situation personal. There is a lot of people dealing with this kind of situation right now. So it's not good to personalize the situation. The thing is, we're not going to be able to predict the future, but we could be prepared for that. So that is another thing. The only way to get out of these patterns of behaviors is to be preparing for the future that we want to build. I love the idea that A, being prepared with just using what you know already to help you prepare for whatever comes. But just going back to what you said, I think it's, it's so true that how often when things are not working out that it is this sort of reaction to start questioning whether or not you started in the first place or to give into this fear and worry about your ability or your capability to make it successful i think that's a really important piece to highlight and kind of comforting to know that many people who are in the business world feel those things too regardless of their level of success yeah uh so for my next question for you is that you know, I've seen just up and down my timeline the many people in the business world from speakers to people who have brick and mortar stores, they're all being impacted by it, but very differently, right? They're all being impacted by COVID, but in very different ways. What advice or would you give to, let's say, the person who's lost out on revenue because their speaking engagement has been canceled? What would advice mm. would you give to that person? Well, I, I could relate to that situation because I also has been impacted from the same situation. I had more than 25 speaking engagements from March to June schedule, and none of them is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And actually, some of them, they didn't have a move into the digital. This means that all of the amount of revenue that I was expecting in the next three, four months is not there. Right. So it's a... It's a situation also because the people who organize the events are thinking what we should do. We move it online or we wait because people don't know if we're going to be able again to gather people in the same place and how many people will be able to gather together. Right. They don't know still what is going to happen. So I, I just know that, of course, it's painful. It's painful not know what is going to happen. It's painful that you probably planned to make a certain amount of money in the next few months and it's not there anymore. And it's no one's fault, obviously. Um, but the only thing that I could tell you is that instead of being in that place of lacking, just looking at the at the situation that you don't have at this moment, that situation, I think it's a good moment to start to improve your, um, um, your um, visibility, to work in your personal branding, to be very active in the social media and use the platforms that is available for you. Why? Because when the world comes back, you need to be ready. And if you haven't been able to really prepare yourself for that moment, you might be out of the game. So for mm -hmm. everyone who works with people who are communicators, who people who work uh, speaking, I think it's extremely important that this is a time of preparation. It's a good time also to refresh your material because sometimes you don't have the time because if you have one speaking engagement after another, it might happen that you could not have the time to refresh your material. And right now it's a great moment 
to just prepare yourself. And you have all this time to read new books, to kind of revise what you have. You, what could you do better? Always, there is something that we could improve. You could also improve your production, your materials, to just update everything. I create a YouTube channel. Um, you know, just reach out to different groups that you never reached out before. Maybe your demographics could change and you could start catering to a different group of people that they, before you didn't think about. So it's a time for innovation. It's a time to think out of the box and absolutely no time to be passive. Of course, of course. What would you say then to the person who does have like a brick and mortar store, but of course have been closed? So what would you say to that kind of entrepreneur? Well, I could also relate to that because it's very close to my family. We have, uh, I have my brothers who have stores in Kenya and in Rwanda and right now are closed for over two months and these employer employees also are with the unknown. I mean, I think the world of retailing is going to change and it's a reality that we've been hearing for months and years before. So I think that all of us who somehow we are related to the retail business and some of my clients also have stores. It's something that we could not ignore the fact that the way people shop is going to change. Right. And we, it's a reality that we need to face. So either you create experiences in your retailing spaces to create different ways of people shopping and you become extremely innovative to get people to get to see you or otherwise you might have to go online and it might be the only way. And it's a reality that it takes time to face, but yeah. it's a great time to prepare right now because if you haven't really gone into that path just yet, now is a good moment to prepare that. But the future of retailing definitely is changing. And with the artificial intelligence and the way that things are working right now, people prefer to shop from their phones. Um, it, it is very comfortable to do it from home. And it's just something that we need to face. I mean, the same way that a lot of the local markets and the street markets changed and we went to the supermarkets and we were okay with that. I mean, we need to gonna, we're gonna change our patterns of behavior. And yeah. if you remain attached to the past, it's gonna be extremely painful. So we need to make sure that we let it go. And if we just go with the flow of what is coming. Yeah, and I've definitely heard a lot of people mention this sort of contactless delivery, you know, way of getting our groceries or our food may be something that becomes the path forward, right? For many businesses. Uh, for the person who's a, a, a part of a startup, who's up and coming and wanting to be an entrepreneur, but hasn't yet really launched their business, what would you say to them? Well, I would say that um, the first question that they need to ask themselves is their why. Why do they want to do that? I mean, it's very important to understand why are you want to go and be, be, be a business? Why do you want to uh, become an entrepreneur? I mean, if if you don't have very clear your mission statement and why you're doing this, you're gonna only rely on the why nots. Right. Why I shouldn't do this, you know? So always your why yes have to be a stronger yeah. and bigger than your why nots. Because you might say, oh, I don't have the education that I need. I might not have the money. I might not have the contacts, the potential investors. Forget about the why nots, just look at your why yes why do you want to do that and also be extremely careful of just thinking oh because this is a crisis right now is not the right moment my experience is that there is no right moment for anything if you are waiting for the right moment oh when i get some money i will just get children or will I start a family when everything is in my professional life in balance all of this procrastination behaviors, they're gonna put your dreams far away of where you are. I do believe that you have to start doing it now. If your why is strong enough, just do it. The world, you don't know if it's gonna be better <laughs> in three years, five years, so just start now. And just be adjusting and learn by doing. If you're a doer, you just not need to have that kind of consciousness of doing. And this is the only thing that has to move you at the end. What do you want to create? And why do you want it to create? And if your why is strong enough, you're just going to do it. Yeah. 
I love that reframe rather than why not, it becomes why yes, because it, I think you're right. As soon as you are aware of your why, even when it is difficult, even when it is unknown and uncertain, that yes propels you forward and makes you want to keep chugging ahead. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way. <laughs> absolutely. No, you're so, you're so, so right. Uh, is there a website, a resource, a book that you'd even point entrepreneurs to in this time that you think is a good resource for them to use? Well, I will share a book that is called Mastery by Robert Greene. And I think it's very important to any entrepreneur to read that. It's not a particular book of business. It's a very different kind of book, but I think it helps me because it, it makes you realize that sometimes you want things right now. Yeah. And what do you need for things to happen? It's absolutely to create mastery, to become a master of something. That's what we're gonna make people buy from you. That's when I'm gonna make people to follow your ideas. That's how leadership is created. And it's when you really become a master of what you're doing or your service, your product. So I think this book is called Mastery by Robert Greene and it's a good book to read right now. And I think it's also, it's a very fun read and I will advise it. Awesome, I'm gonna add that to my reading list for sure. Uh, as we wrap up today, if you can say in five words or less something that all entrepreneurs should keep in mind or should know in the time of this pandemic, what would that be? Well, I will just send in a message of hope and there is a lot of light after the tunnel because we know that every kind of transformation personally comes from pain. Yeah. Pain is something that we could not avoid but suffering is a choice. One thing is clear. Now we all experiencing pain globally, like a community, like a society. And I do believe this century is the century for entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is gonna show us the way. I do believe in this pandemic situation, we learn that politicians, governments, they're not able to solve all these problems. Right. So I think this is the time for entrepreneurs, for artists, to be in the table and to see what kind of society do we want to build. So it is time for us to take action like a whole. And we realize that this transformation is of the whole society level. We all experienced in transformations in our lives and we know that it didn't come without pain. I don't know anybody who grow from the comfort zone, in the comfort zone. Everyone, we grow when we are out of our comfort zone. In this case, like society, where are we going? So every entrepreneur has to realize how do you want to contribute to the new world, to the new society that is coming, it's coming. So all of us, we need to really think what is your personal contribution to that? So that would be my message to entrepreneurs. Absolutely, and again, it goes right back to this idea of why yes, right? Like if you are so clear on what it is you want to offer the world, then that does give you an internal as well as an external motivator to keep plugging away and keep doing what you do. Absolutely, entrepreneurs, we solve problems and we create pleasure, people, things that people like, or we solve a problem. That's the two reasons why you go to entrepreneurship, to make people happy or to solve a problem that people have. So if that is the reasons why we go into entrepreneurship, why we keep complaining about, oh, the world is this way, the world is that way, Let's go out there and try to solve these problems. Let's try to make people happy. Exactly, we have to use our, our ability to innovate, like you, you've been saying this whole time, to really solve those problems, identify what the problems are or what uh, solutions we haven't yet found and then put them into place as best as we can. Uh, Bibi, this has been excellent. How can people find you if they want to connect with you, learn more about your companies or the work that you're doing. I know you're very, very busy, but how can they get in touch with you? Well, it's very easy because it's my name, Bicila Bococo. So all of my social media is connected to my name, Bicila Bococo. You could find me in my website, BicilaBococo.com. I'm in LinkedIn. I love Instagram too. And you could just follow me, Bicila Bococo, YouTube channel, Bicila Bococo. So very simple. And yes, that's that. We see Lavo Coco. You just Google it and you will see all of the platforms where you could find me. <laughs> 
Wonderful. And I will be sure to put all your information in the post along with the book that you just recommended for people to find very easily. Thank you so much, Bibi. It's been great having you. It's the same pleasure for me, Dr. Anika. It's really a pleasure. I've been a fan of your work also. And I think that people like you also are very, very important for entrepreneurs because all of entrepreneurs need to keep our sanity, keep our positive thinking. And I know you're doing that. So thank you for being there for so many people. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. And I thank all of you for watching. I really do hope that you took all these great gems. Innovate, innovate, innovate is kind of the message I feel like BB has left with us today. Um, And that we will absolutely see you at the next interview. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Ciao. Bye.